Welcome back to Just Blazer Programming. Today we have a very short video on a very easy concept, but a very important one called Code Behind. Now, what is Code Behind? Code Behind is a way that you can make your Blazer code much better and easier to work with. Because if you have seen what a component is, a component basically has the HTML piece up here and the code piece down here somewhere. And then it just keeps getting worse. It just keeps getting bigger and bigger, the bigger the product you have, and it becomes much harder and less scalable over time. So code behind is a way to uh, help you out, especially if you're the one that has to keep up with everything or if you're coming new to a project, it is a nice way of handling and decoupling almost the where your code's gonna go. So you have your HTML part in one half and then you have the code part in the other. So it's much easier for you to read. The compiler doesn't care which one or the other. It's just a tool for you to use. And I'm here to teach you these tools to make your development process much easier. So let's get started on this, on this IDE, and you'll have a sneak peek as well as to my new upcoming tutorial. So this is the product that I'm working on a little bit later. Hopefully I have this done by the end of the week. But in here, we have a pretty decent example of what I would want to use the code behind for. Now, I know that this is not a lot of code and right now, but it can get far heavier considering I have two services going off on two interfaces and there's a lot of things that are going to happen here. So in this case, um, what I want to do is create something that allows me to run this very same code, but I want it to be behind the HTML so that I can separate this code portion from the HTML portion up here. So the way that will look like uh, is going to be something like this over here. So I tried this example out. So I had the fetch data and I put it here, but you're going to see me do it in real time with this instead. So that's what the code behind actually looks like the HTML part up here. And then there's this, uh, the C sharp portion down here, but it is what you see here. So where I'm going to teach you how to convert this into that so that when you move forward with your components, if you believe a component is going to need to be scalable and it's going to be very, very useful over time and get more complex, you should apply this. So the first thing we need to do is in the exact same place where we're going to have our, uh, our razor component. So in this case, my razor component is called reusable component. We're going to make a class within the same, uh, directory. We're going to add it here. And a new item. So this is going to be a C sharp class, but there's a specific way of actually writing this. So, uh, you don't have to give it the same name, I think, but if you do, I believe everything will hand be handled for you. So in this case, this name is going to be reusable. Component. But we also have to add the dot razor dot CS here so that this will be associated with the component that has the same name. And boof, we have just associated that uh, this razor, uh, this code here with this C sharp class. So this is wrong because you have to do a little bit more work. So this is no longer going to be a public class. What you need to do is change this in something called the partial class. Instead of it, and you add the partial class. And that will allow you to work with that. And now you basically have a partial class associated with this. So now obviously what you want to do is add the code from the reusable component to here. So it's pretty simple. Just copy paste. But what you want to do is get um, uh, all the libraries and stuff that you want here. Copy paste that. And now we need to change our our tags here. So instead of it at using, it's just going to be using. And I'll go back to the um, the inject stuff here. These are the services that I have. Um, these are interfaces, but this is not how you write them. You have. For now, I'm just gonna. So I want to add this code now, and that's fairly easy. You copy paste this. in here and also um as a rule of thumb when you do this please add the system library and because i have a task down here the task no i don't actually so i don't need it but i will dot writing that task 
This is only if you're using the async stuff and because you're using components, components have the async methods. It's just good to have this off the bat. Don't forget about it. So in this case, obviously we're not done yet. We have to work with these. We have to somehow get this to work. It's not done yet. What am I missing here is the actual services. So how do I add these services to here? So I can't do the same that I did with uh, the libraries. So I have to go and actually add them in. Get set, but not done yet. We have to actually add the inject tag on this, and we are going to be missing one more library, I believe the applications one. Yeah, patch. One, maybe I'll get the reason why afterwards. Oh, I know why. I have to delete them here. So it's going to be as if we're deleting them all from here. Boom, that was the that was the issue. And now we have to inject this one to get our our service working. Yeah, I, this is going to be a very interesting tutorial that I have both YouTube analytics and cars in this. But I promise it'll make sense later i had to pick two completely different subjects for this new tutorial that i'm going to do but that's really it so the only difference that you have to remember is when you move code between the component uh to your partial class here is that the injects are done differently so the services the interfaces that you want to inject into the component has to be done using these tags instead of using them like this up here that's basically it Everything else is basically just a copy paste job. And I do believe, and also don't forget to add your system. They're not going to be provided for you in the back. Like I believe the components do. Really. So any, any libraries and stuff that you're going to need, especially the component uh, library, you're going to need to add them here as well. That's basically, it. that's what the code behind is, is just a way of organizing your code better. And it just runs the same. The only difference is, is that now I could keep this focused on just HTML stuff and maybe minor code things here and then put all the heavy stuff that I do in the background over here so that it doesn't get too cluttered for me. And that'll make you happy. They'll make any team members happy because, you know, they have less to look at when they work on stuff. And that's really all there is to it. Don't worry. I'm still working on this. This is still going to be the tutorial for later on for an actual, you know, big tech thing. So... Stay tuned for that. This was just me teaching you an interesting tool that I found out that that Blazor has, and it's a carryover from other uh, older languages that Microsoft had. So I thought it was neat. Hopefully that helps you out somehow. Hopefully that makes your code a lot better. And that was it. Easy peasy. See you later.